and welcome to another WoW Model Viewer video tutorial. I'm your host Kajasi, and today we're going to look at lighting and recording of character out of WoW Model Viewer so he can be put into other projects. Specifically, I'm going to show you some of the techniques I use to create the intro to the tutorials and this amazing wallpaper you can see on my desktop. If you want to download this wallpaper, you can get it at wowmodelviewer.org orgs, forums, or you can click the link in the description on the YouTube site. All right, so first things first, we're going to come over here and load WoW Model Viewer. All right, fully loaded. Now, you can do this with any creature or character, but I've chosen Deathwing. Why? I don't know. I did it for the opening, and I figured, eh, might as well do, do it for this. Uh, oh, here's Deathwing. I completely went by him. So, here he is, the infamous Deathwing. Now, since I have the model loaded, I don't need the file list anymore. So I can hide that, and that gives us a lot more room to work with. You know, I can look at him and position him and get him pretty much where I want, just looking right at us. Now, one of the things I need to do next is figure out what animation I want him to do. Well, fly, fall, and no. Now, after you've selected an animation, you can actually press the up and down keys to cycle through different animations. If you click on something else, that won't work. Now, I already know exactly which one I used. Battle Roar. There, that looks good, but it does look like he's breathing fire at us. So, let's say we tilt him down a bit. There, that looks better. Okay, now one thing I need to point out before I close the animation window is on my computer, my system actually doesn't do too well when it's recording with fraps. Uh, I found that it actually records at like half the frames it needs. So the way around that is I can take the animation speed down to, you know, five times, 0.5 times. This will make the animation take twice as long, but you'll notice it looks nice and smooth. So if it skips frames, it should still look just as good. Okay, so I can close this window. And now I can zoom in and position and get the final look of how I want to look. All right. I think... Yeah. Okay, so that looks good. Now, I want him to look like he's in the Firelands or, you know, some other incredibly hot area. Right now, he has this kind of nice, cool blue lighting almost. But, you know, actually the lighting's completely white. So what we'll do is come up to View and then Show Lighting Controls. That'll bring up this little guy. Now, you can play with all the controls and, you know, see... That's what it looks like without any lights. You can, you know, change the light types. And you'll notice that, oh, it's kind of giving him a shadow right here and all sorts of cool stuff. You can do a position light. And, but I think for this, we're just going to use a simple directional light and just play with the colors. Down here, you can see positioning and, rota and target rotations, but that's a little bit more advanced thing. And we're not going to cover that too much this time. Okay, first, let's change the ambient color. Now... He's going to be in kind of a hot zone, so let's give him a nice ambient color, but let's also give him a little bit darker ambient color. The reason is it gives a nice shading effect. And I see already he looks much better. But, you know, let's, for an example, say we want him to be underwater. We can do blue, and there. He kind of looks like he belongs underwater or in a very dark night set. But let's go back to our orange. Now, we can also try out, you know, red, you know, see, ooh, that kind of looks nice. But you can go through here and play with these colors for a very long time before you get what you want. Now, ambient light is basically the light that's just on all the time. This is, you know, the light that's going to color him even if all the lights are off. And it's basically the light that seeps into all the shadows. Now, directional light, which is what we're doing now is the light that's hitting him directly. Now, if I do a purple, 
you'll notice that that changes him quite a bit. He goes from being blue to being purple. And I can do, you know, green. And that gives him kind of a sickly color. But white takes him back to his original color. I think for this, we're going to want to create, you know, kind of a orange yellow. And then we'll brighten it up a little bit. Just so we don't go too far. There. Something like that looks good. That kind of looks like he's in the fire lands. So I can close this. And now we're talking. And now it's time to figure out how we're going to record him. Now, there's lots of software out there. And some are better than others. But I found that uh, Fraps actually has a really nice little function here. Now, first thing you're going to want to do is obviously when the frames per second thing, make sure it's on hide overlay. I mean, if you have it show up, you know, look here, I have 60 frames, but that's going to record. At least I think that's how it happens. Anyways, I'm going to leave that on just for a bit. You can see my frame rates dropping immensely. Now, oh, one important thing to note when you're compositing a character, you're going to want force lossless RGB capture on. The reason for that is if I record and then I try to select this background, if I try to select this background color, it's going to, uh, well, it's going to record every single pixel exactly the way it should. So I'm kind of happy with these settings for right now. So let's hit record and see how we're doing. Now you'll notice almost instantly that my frame rates dropped dramatically, and I just had a major lag spike right there. But, you know, the sad part is, it's going to record that way, too. I want this nice smooth motion we see at 60%. Now, that is why we slowed down his animation, so fraps will actually work better. Now, even with... You know, I'm going to turn off the frames for a second. Even with... Uh, the Force Lossless RGB, you know, this isn't a really good color for compositing Deathwing out of. Why? Because you want a color that is not in the character. He has a lot of blue in there, so there might be some overlap. So let's choose a nice color. and Let me add that to my custom so I can get back to it. Uh, green. Now, there is no possibility any pixel of Deathwing is going to have this green in it. So this makes it a perfect one. So now I hit my F9, which is my capture key for fraps. And it's going to go through. I'll let it cycle like two or three times. So now that I have my creature, it's time to close while model viewer. We're actually done with while model viewer. Everything else is done using After Effects or another editing software. I used After Effects to create the opening because I did a lot, of, I mean a lot of special things. So here's the After Effects project for creating the opening video. Now, I've already logged in. I've already got my video. This is actually the one I made yesterday. But uh, let me show you some of the things I did with it. Let me hide all the... Well, I'll solo this. This is basically what I recorded just a moment ago. That now, I come in here to... I'll reset that. I come in here and I add a color key effect. I use right click uh, and it's keen color key. Now there's a lot of tutorials that show you how to do stuff in After Effects, so I'm not going to cover too much of that. But I added the color key and now I'm going to select the background color. And that gives us a perfect matte for Deathwing. Now the reason why we had the forceless RGP was to create this perfect mat. If we hadn't done it, it probably would have looked a little bit more like that. You know, not quite as clean, and then we'd have to go in here and play all the settings and everything, try to clean it up as best we can. With the lossless, it's just perfect every single time. Then I added a blur, and then I did a whole bunch of other things that really made it play well. So one of the th big things I did was I added this background. Here, let me hide a whole bunch of stuff. I started out with this background. 
Next, I added some sparks. This is basically like, you know, environmental fire sparks kind of flying up. Then I added this ground object. Now, this is just an image that I rendered out in a 3D software, specifically Lightwave. But, you know, you can take a photo, you can, you know, take a background, you can take a plate from, you know, World of Warcraft itself. It doesn't matter what you put in here. It's a matter of how you put it in the proper layers and how you play with it so it all looks like it's recorded at the same time. So, I also added fires, and then I added Deathwing, and I made sure he... And now, I actually put blurs on a lot of these things just to give it a better look. Then I added some more fires... And then I added some environmental sparks in the front. And all of this combined together to create this really, really nice looking composite. Now, you may be wondering, what did I do for the breath? Well, I have a, you can see this layer right here, P null. Stands for particle null. And it creates this little box right here. You know, I don't know if you can see it on the low resolution, you know, versions of the video, but my mouse is going around where this little box is. And it's an it's an After Effects null. And I basically followed where Deathwing's mouth was and then positioned and rotated that little null to kind of emulate where his mouth was. Then I created the fire effect. You know, let me hide the fire effect. Yeah, I'll solder the null. So I have this kind of following and rotating how Deathwing moves. If I can add Deathwing in here. Yeah, you can see the two just kind of follow together. And I applied particles to that. And, and it really, you know, sold that he was breathing fire. Now, this is just a simple... Uh, particle system that I applied, you know, an in a, ga a texture from the video game to, and then just, you know, had him breathe towards us. And it just creates this relatively good fire effect. And when it's all composited together, here, let me, my system's pretty old, so if I go down to a quarter quality, Oh, and if you have a uh, quality uh, lower than full, you're going to get this green line, but don't worry, it, it won't render out that way. But here you can, you know, very quickly see how it's looking. And so what I did then is I just rendered it out and used it for the opening. And here's the title. And that is a very brief overview of how to light, record, and composite an animation from WoW Model Viewer into your project. I hope you've had fun, and I'll see you next time.